What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be making a Venom mask that I was inspired to make uh, after seeing the new trailer. Despite all the different reactions, opinions, and feelings concerning this trailer, I think everybody agrees that the symbiote suit, or at least what they show of it, particularly uh, Venom's head itself, is in frame for quite some time. And it looks awesome. It's what I've been wanting to see on screen for years, so I was inspired to make this. Uh, this is made to fit my head, and as so, the corresponding patterns to it that I will take photos of, put up on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> and also, if you'd like to go to the Etsy shop and purchase your own digital JPEGs of the patterns, you can do that. They are meant to fit a 33-inch head. That is 33 inches measuring this way around your head. Uh, when it is on my head, it is loose. So, 33 and a half, you'll be able to squeeze in pretty good. 34, you're stretching it. Aside from that, you're going to have to scale them up or scale them down. Also, keep in mind, you know, depending upon the shape of your face, you're going to need room for, you know, your nose and everything in here. So keep that in mind when you're gluing in the teeth and doing all this stuff. I only glued in as much stuff as would fit, which requires me to try the mask on as I'm making it. However, measuring yourself correctly and having the right size scaled patterns are going to be the biggest factor and all that. And if for some reason you're like me and you're pretty much computer illiterate and don't understand how to scale things up and down like that, the other way is to just trace out around them larger. And even then if you're not sure, you can always just make a cardboard or cardstock mock-up of the basic shell that you tape together with duct tape and crudely shove on your head. If it doesn't fit or it's too tight, then it's obviously not going to fit with foam, which is thicker. So all that being said, before we get into the video, I want to give a couple shout outs. So if you'd like to skip this, you can. First of all, <clears throat> it took a little longer than usual to get this video done because I had a break-in this week, which also cost me to exhaust X amount of cash to improve home security, which is going to unfortunately slow down future video projects a little bit. However, still going to do them. <clears throat> but the first shout out I want to give to my neighbor, who basically saved my butt. I was not home. Uh, my fiance, children, they were not home. So that's good. Nobody was here. But he did see the guy breaking in, and he did rush outside and rack his shotgun, which scared the guy off. Okay, so big shout out to my neighbor Paul. Dude, you're awesome. Uh, if anything ever happened, of course, I would do the same for you. So I appreciate to know that I have a good uh, neighbor who is going to look out for me. Of course, the police showed up and did an excellent and thorough job. So the second shout out is to the local police here. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being courteous and thorough in what you did and in the process of ensuring my family's safety. I really appreciate that. Third shout out is going to subscriber Fee Lin. Uh, <coughs> he has a lot of great suggestions for cosplays, including an upcoming RoboCop cosplay I'm going to be working on in the future. It's not going to be in the next few weeks or anything. I've got some other projects lined up, like I want to do a Deadpool mask, uh, Shredder from the Ninja Turtles, not the new movies, but the older version we're going to be doing uh, partly as a commission. So shout out to you for asking for a shredder commission. And <laughs> also, I want to give a shout out to uh, Donovan Powell, who won the Instagram drawing that I had the other day for 300 uh, followers on Instagram. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it. I haven't, I just mailed it, so obviously I haven't got to see a reaction photo, but all photos that are submitted by viewers and contest winners are up on the Instagram and Facebook if you would like to check them out. And as always, thank you guys for watching and subscribing. You guys are all awesome. I really appreciate your support. And now, okay, first thing you're going to want to do video. is trace and cut out your patterns. You're going to need two of these and two of these for the main body of the mask. And once you trace out one, you'll flip it over, trace out the other side. And these are traced and cut out of five millimeter EVA foam. And it's just some generic craft foam. Silly winks. It's like a dollar twenty-seven a sheet. I pick it up at Hobby Lobby. If you don't have one of those, you can always probably, I'm certain, order it online or a similar product. And the first thing you're gonna do is take contact cement. And you're going to contact cement each side of these V's. And you're going to let them sit for 15 minutes so the contact cement can set. And you're going to glue them all together. And whenever you do, as you can see here, 
and over on this other one as well, which I've just put together, that it really starts to give the mask its shape. All right, once you get all of your pieces together, this looks like it's coming apart. But anyways, once you get all your pieces together and you have all your Vs, you're going to want to take and apply contact cement from here all the way around this edge to this very bottom here. And then on this piece, you're going to want to do it from the tip of this point all the way around to here. And you're going to want to glue those two together so that it'll come out looking something like this. All right, of course, the final process of all this is to glue both sides together. And you'll notice as well that the right and left eyes are different. And you're also going to notice that all my cuts are pretty clean and exact, except for in the eyes. I did get a little sloppy there, but I did that on purpose. I wanted it to look ragged and kind of gnarly, and I feel like I accomplished that pretty good. So now that that's done, next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of heating and shaping on this to start to get it to look uh, more rounded and less boxy where it's all glued together. And to do that, I'm going to use a, a heat gun. Now you can use a heat or a heat, a hair dryer, but my general experience is that it does not work the best. Uh, it takes much longer for the foam to heat up and is much harder, if not near impossible, to get it uh, warm enough to really stretch some good shape into it. So I do suggest a heat gun for this. All right, so next I am taking three millimeter EVA foam and I am cutting out and then heating up the pattern pieces. And when I heat them up, I heat the back side first and just kind of curve it. And then I heat the front side here with the heat gun and I just kind of stretch and pull this nice shape into it that makes this look like a bunch of jagged teeth. And the pattern pieces are labeled, but you'll see they kind of look like spearheads or arrowheads. I drew out a couple of generic shapes for you guys, but honestly I cut all these freehand. Uh, so that they all are slightly different, so they don't look identical whenever I glue them into the mask. Now it's not imperative that you do them at this stage, it's just you're going to need a lot of teeth. I'm estimating about 60 to 90. I know that's a lot and that's ridiculous. You don't have to put that much. But I want it to really fill out and look like it does in the trailer as much as possible. So I'm kind of taking it to the extreme. I'm going to start with this pile. This is about half of them that I still have left to heat. Uh, the other half are in the other room. But yeah, this is something you're going to need to do at some point. So I'm just starting mine now so I can have it done. But next, uh, moving forward with the main shell of the mask, I will okay, be Okay, so now that I've cut a million teeth and so like I'm probably going to still have to cut more, probably have about 60, move on to the heating. And if you look here, you're going to notice this side is squared off here. And if you look at this side, it's nice and round. It's not perfect, but it's much, so much better than over here. And the reason for that is, is this Drill Master heat gun that I have. And it is dual setting, a low and a high. I usually do it on high when I'm doing large spots. Like, for example, this side, I did a section, then I moved a little further back, did another little section. But the areas I'm heating are around that large at a time. And you'll also notice up here, if I can get it in camera just right, yeah, you'll see how that's kind of squared right there and has that angle. And over here it's rounded. That's all from this heat gun. Now, I also have a canvas mannequin head underneath this and I use the mannequin head to help get it round. Since the mannequin head has a round shape what I do is and if you have headphones this may get loud when I turn this on but what I do is I turn this on I heat up the area that I need to and I begin to smooth it out with my fingers and round it out and get it to not have such a square shape by working the foam on the mannequin head. And of course it helps if you use two hands, but just for the purpose of demonstration. And you'll notice there, it's already somewhat more round. You can see right there, which is of course right by where a seam is. 
It's still a little knobby, so I'll have to concentrate on that and smooth that out. But I'm basically going to go through and do that on both sides here. Along this seam here. And on through here. And the center seam. And this other side seam, like I said, I already started to work on. But I stopped about here. I'm going to go ahead and heat all that and round it off. I'm going to do this off camera just to help speed up the video. And once I get all this round, we're going to come back and start putting in the sides and the jaw definition and the lip area and all that stuff. Okay, I have it all nice and rounded as evenly as I can. There is a bit of a point still there, but I am going to sand all that off with a Dremel, so that kind of doesn't matter. But I've got it all rounded. And what I'm starting to do now is shape the rest of the mask. And you'll notice here, in between these two seams here on the mask, I've already heated it and put an indentation. And this indentation I put on both sides. And what I'm going to do is fire up my heat gun here. This may be a little loud if you're wearing headphones. I'm just going to heat all that in there and I'm going to go ahead and press this seam in just a little bit because what this is basically representing is, as you can see, it's already kind of even here with the way the seams form the mask. This essentially would be where the ear would be going down into the jaw. So I'm going to go ahead and heat and shape the rest of this side and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here, first off, just for the side-by-side -side comparison, I don't know how much you can see, but this is just kind of straight and blobby, and this one comes up and starts to have an interesting shape here. And what I did was I heated this, and I pressed in here, and I used my finger and pushed up underneath while pulling down to give this nice jawline into it. Hopefully that'll show up good on camera. And this jawline goes back around where the ear is. And yeah, like I say, just push it in here. Uh, heated it here. Give it kind of more of a mouthy shape to it. And like I say, the impression of a jawbone. And I'm going to do the same on this side, which you can see there's nothing done to it. It is totally flat. Bam. Over into this side. Got all that nice shape starting to flush out. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. Okay, so here is the final jaw shape for the lower jaw. And of course, I am going to make the, the pattern for the base of the teeth along here uh, out of the shape of this. You can use that pattern piece as a reference. That should help somewhat give you an idea. I'll also look up pictures of Venom, reference photos from the film, or just Snake Jaws is kind of what this is more reminiscent the lower part of. Now, for the upper one, you notice this is kind of flaring out a little, so what I'm going to do is heat the backside and the front and just kind of curl it under a little bit so that when I glue the gums in, that'll match up a little bit better. And just to show you here for comparison, you can see this side has been heated on the back side and I use my fingers to curve it down. And this side I have done nothing with and it is still totally flat. Looks very plain, very uninteresting. This side, bam, looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and heat the rest of this and I'm going to move on to sanding with a Dremel and then hand sanding. Okay, so now that I am totally happy with the shape of this, I'm going to go ahead and start sanding it down and Dremeling it. And for that, of course, I have my Dremel rotary tool and face mask to protect against particles. I don't want to inhale all that. You should wear safety equipment as well, as well as some safety goggles. And I have a medium grit sanding head on it. And I usually set it right in between 15 and 20, at least to start. That's a good safe area, I feel, for foam.
Okay, so what I've done so far is I've started to round this off, and I've also sanded down the seam so it's smoother and more even. And I'm going to continue to sand down all the seams on this entire mask, all the way around, all the V-cuts that we angled together and glued everything. And I'm also going to sand and round off the top, much like I am the bottom here. After I get done with that, I'm going to do that off camera, then I'll come back and show there you guys what that looks like. All of the trim work done and everything sanded out along all the seams, and I rounded out all these edges down here, also on the bottom and on the inside as well. And didn't do anything to this though, but don't really need to. That can remain sharp. And now I'm going to take a 250 grit sanding block, and I'm going to blend all this stuff in together. Once I'm going to do that, I'm going to move on to some 320 grits. I think, yeah, 320 fine, 3M sanding block to do a little more over that just to help blend the rest of it in. Once I'm done with that, I will take the heat gun and just go over it real quick to help seal up all these areas where I've sanded. All right, so now that I have all my sanding and heat shaping done, I'm going to need to glue in the upper and lower gum line. And... You don't want this sticking up too much, but you do want it sticking up if you want to see it. So that's the first things I'm going to contact cement in. I'm going to start with the lower one, and you see this line I drew here? That's drawn directly in the center, so I can line that up with my seam and contact cement this in. Okay, so I got the upper gums glued in, and this was a bit tricky because I had to start with the middle and make sure that these pieces didn't touch and gradually work from the center to the side and then back over here. And these gum pieces I cut out of 2mm EVA craft foam. They're rather thin. They're going to be even thinner once I heat them and curl them down and put a little shape into them. I'll show you guys what I'm doing with that. But not until after I glue in the lower jaw piece, which same thing. I, of course, have it marked where the center is, and once I glue in the lower gum piece, I will start from the center and work around, same as the top. Then after that, we're going to put in the actual tooth mounts on the top and the bottom. And I did these patterns a little bigger, so I did have to trim about mm, two-thirds of an inch off of each end piece here because it just kind of hung out over it. I'm certain I'll probably have to trim the bottom as well, but I'd rather have some to trim off than not enough because then I'd have to start over. Okay, I got the upper and lower gums in and I heated them from the inside and just kind of pushed them over doing a couple inches at a time with the heat gun and then just kind of pushing them in. And same as before, I trimmed off the excess. And next, you're going to need the upper teeth mount and the lower teeth mount. And you're going to glue this inside following the curvature of the mouth. And you're basically going to be gluing it onto the back side of the gums here. And as far as a guideline and shape for it, you want to just follow the shape of this outer piece. Of course, you're going to be gluing it on the inside, but you want to follow and bend it to the curvature of the mouth itself as you glue this outside edge in. And to glue this in, I'm gonna use contact cement, and I am also gonna glue in the lower teeth mount as well. I'll contact cement both of these in and come back and show you so you know exactly what I mean. All right, so here is the shelves, uh, essentially, the tooth mounts. And just basically shelves you can mount the teeth to. Now to get the upper one in, no joke, I cut it in half and put it in one side and then the other just because it fit pretty tight. It was a little easier to maneuver the lower one so I didn't have to cut it in half. But yeah, to cut it in half, put one side in and then the other and then glue it back together. And of course these are to hold this myriad pile of teeth that I've made and these are going to be glued in with hot glue. I'm going to start in the center and just work my way around to each side on the bottom and the top then I'm going to go and start doing the second row and the third row. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and glued the teeth in here, and hopefully you can see, I can get this in the light and on camera and in focus good. You'll notice that this came out looking like a pretty decent looking gum line, and how I did that was I used the points to signify where the tooth is going to go in between, put some hot glue there, pulled it in place and held it very carefully so I'm not getting hot glue on my fingers to get the teeth in there and to get these little ridges to make it look like gums. And so far I feel like it's come out looking pretty good. And I've also realized something, I'm not going to need to really do three rows of teeth on the top. The bottom is hanging down from the perspective that you'll be wearing the mask. People will see those rows of teeth down here, but up here it's pretty much going to be covered. I am, however, going to take some extra teeth and just kind of glue them in behind here and there so you can see, you know, that there is overlapping teeth, but I don't need to really go through and fill in all the rows I thought I was going to need to, which also means that I made possibly too many teeth, but... I didn't want to have to go back and stop in the, in the center of all this and make them one by one to fill in where I'm missing. So, I guess too much in this case is good, or so I'm just going to be optimistic. Yeah, so to further explain, and I was kind of worried I might actually have to slit the back and put a Velcro closure. So far, I don't think so. Because where my head, my back, the back of my head obviously is here. Top of my head is about here. Forehead and eyes are about here. My nose is right about here. My lips are down here. My chin's about there. So I'm actually pretty far. My head itself is just right in this area. All this up front here is still pretty open. So I have space for tongue and other rows of teeth. But since I don't need all the extra rows of teeth up top, I can trim that down just to give my face a little bit more room. So I'm going to go ahead and glue on some more teeth on the bottom as well. But keep in mind, you're going to have a tongue coming out of here, which is why I don't have a lot of teeth right here. And the one I have in front is pretty small. That is intentional because I want the tongue to be coming out between here and kind of doing whatever, right? So... Teeth, glue the rows on either side, but leave that space here empty for the tongue itself. You don't need to grow, glue the second or third rows of teeth here because you're going to have the tongue. Okay, so if you're seeing this right now, you're probably thinking, man, he really skipped ahead, but I didn't. Uh, this tongue, I just want to show off how cool it looks before I glue it in. Uh, I was taking pictures, putting it on, standing in front of the mirror, etc., etc. Just to make sure the tongue wasn't too long. I know it's venom. There's no such thing as too long of a tongue, but I don't want it to look goofy either because, you know, this will be included in with the patterns. So to make the tongue, what I did was I came up with this pattern and I basically heated the back side of it and then curled this over and bent this up so that you can fold it over and glue it to the inside of the mask. Now, I did not glue this in. And I'm going to take this out to show you exactly what it looks like from the underside. How this is stuck in here is just with a thumbtack. Which, if you're not 100% sure about if you want something to be totally solid or not, you can just use a thumbtack to hold it in place before you go ahead and contact some any super glue or hot glue or whatever you're using. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to set the camera down for a second. Okay, so there you can see the thumbtack that's in it, probably. Okay. So, yeah. Tongue curls up and glues in to the top side with uh, your teeth on the bottom, and this glues into the top side, right in the center. Now, like I said, I just heated this and curled it. That's it. And it already pretty much has a shape. I did stretch. You'll notice this is much more uh, intense curvature than what is on the pattern. That is because I took this and I stretched it and pulled it and tugged it as it was heated to get it in that extra little shape there to make it look a little more realistic and a little more gnarly. And before I go ahead and glue this tongue in, I want to show you too, as I was saying, I had done several rows, up to three rows of teeth on the bottom. On the top, I just did a secondary row pretty much just through the center. I stop over here on the sides because you can't really see it. 
once you get to this point the teeth are so overlapping it pretty much closes it up okay so i'm going to go ahead and using some contact cement i'm going to glue this tongue okay sure i have permanently glued the tongue in here and hopefully you can see inside there uh, that flap that extends off the top the, the, the upper end of the tongue here just folds over and contact cements in place. I haven't glued it anywhere else, so it is technically a little bit loose. I could probably wiggle my mouth or my nose or my tongue or something and make it bounce up and down, but otherwise it is, it's, it's there, it's not going anywhere. And come to think of it, I might not have mentioned, but this is three millimeter foam. Sorry, I don't believe actually I mentioned that earlier. This is 3mm foam that I use for the tongue. You can use 5, and I would prefer to uh, actually have used 5, honestly, but I'm not plastic dipping it or anything, so it shouldn't be too heavy. So I think this will hold up just fine. Uh, the only worry would be if I dropped this, and I have occasion to do that. One of my Red Hood masks, I went to the con, I'm standing in line, uh, took the helmet off because I'm hot, uh, go up to pay, drop it straight on the ground, damage it. Like, if, if, if you're careful and don't constantly take your, your mask off in crowded places, you won't have that happen probably. But next thing I'm going to do... Now that I have all the teeth glued in and everything, as I'm going to heat just this edge right along here and curve these in just a little bit more on both the top and bottom of the eye. And then after that, we're going to go on to the next phase. And the next phase is going to be involving something I normally don't use in the videos, which is liquid latex, uh, along with some other things that I normally do use, hot glue and uh, the DAP Alex Plus acrylic latex plus silicone caulk that I use, but the liquid latex is going to be something different. Because if you look real closely in the images from the trailer, there's raised lumps and brows and fissures and all this crazy stuff going on all over the actual head of Venom, which is how it was in the comics too, so that's awesome. Like, so excited to see that on the screen. But, gonna have to add all that stuff in. And, before we go any further, you don't have to add that stuff in. Like, just this here alone is a pretty good mask. And if you don't feel like going on and spending the money on the latex and doing all that stuff, you don't have to. I just happen to have the latex, so I'm using it. But if I didn't, I wouldn't go out and spend money on it, honestly. But, definitely stick around for the next segment, because this is gonna be pretty cool. Okay, so to get some of the raised detail above the eyes, for example, if you look at uh, stills or just watch the trailer in high definition and pause it, you'll notice these almost veiny looking furrows that are coming up on both sides above the brows. They kind of culminate right in between here and come down into the eye just a little bit. And in order to add that in, I'm going to use several things. First and chief of which is going to be the hot glue gun. I'll give you a quick example of what I'm going to do so that you're not like gasping in horror as I cover this thing in glue and other stuff. I made this using hot glue, latex, uh, toilet paper, silicone, the same silicone I use to seal stuff, and EVA foam to get all these pieces. And I'm going to do a similar process that I did to make this. I also illustrated all the pages and got it signed by Bruce Campbell. If anybody knows what this is and what it's from, sound off in the comments. And I'll give you a shout out in the next video. But anyways, <laughs> I'm going to use the same similar process to put some of the uh, veiny furrows in the brow and things like that. And also to have this extend out just a little bit up into here and down. And in between that I want to have a little stretchy mishmash that I will do with the toilet paper and the liquid latex. So I'm going to go ahead and start by applying some hot glue on the brow. I'm going to do this off camera. Uh, I need to look at reference photos for one thing. I need more light than this for another thing. And I'm going to need to hold it at an awkward angle. That is going to be kind of hard to get on film. But I will come back and show you this first side. I'm going to do this first because I actually have a visual on this side in the reference photo. When you're looking at the, the, the shots from the trailer, you don't actually get this side. It's all shadowed. But you do get over here pretty good. So... I'm going to start on that first and then improvise. The okay, so this is what I was talking about with the hot glue. I'm going in and putting in the raised areas. 
that you can kind of see caught up in the light. Now, this is all pretty extreme. What I'm going to be doing is going over this with the silicone to help smooth this out and make it look more natural so it's not just such an abrupt flat to lump. I want it to like a valley in between the two, in between these different lumps. So there's going to be a bunch of silicone action during here. But much like a house, you first need the framework. And this is the framework for all that silicone and latex work that I'm going to go in and do. And of course this side I have not done yet. Uh, this side I'm just going to guess. This one I at least had the photo for a reference. Uh, mine aren't as large or exaggerated I don't feel like as the ones from the actual film. But it just seemed like a bit much to do them that big. So I'm going to go through and do the other side, just kind of using my imagination to help fill out everything I think I'm going to need. And you'll notice this glue in some areas, I should point this out because this is pretty crucial. Duh, I need to point this out. But you'll notice like right here, center frame, this lump is sticking up pretty high right there. The one right there in front, if I can get it to focus, there we go. And how I get it to do that without just completely spreading out whenever I put the hot glue on, because you can put it on, it wants to just spread out into one big glob, is I apply, say for example, a line like this, then I immediately flip the mask upside down so that gravity pulls it out this way instead of allowing it to spread out. And a lot of times too, when it's upside down, I'll sitting here blowing on it so it can cool faster so I can turn it back and go on to the next piece and yeah okay so I did end up actually thickening up these brow areas as I kept looking at it and looking at the photo and looking at it and looking at the photo I kept noticing something that just wasn't right so I had to make them more pronounced and larger way when you get that side profile you can see them uh, standing out and next of course I'm going to start doing all of the silicone work like I said I'm going to apply it in between here to help smooth and even all this out so it blends into the actual base mask itself okay so I've started the siliconing and this side I've already let dry at least to the touch and you'll notice the contrast obviously between this and this Whereas this here, I've used it to mellow out the gaps between all the wrinkles. So it's not so extreme. So it just doesn't look like a bunch of glue on stuff. And once I apply the silicone, I run some water over it. And the type of silicone that I'm using actually isn't fully silicone. What it is, is an acrylic latex with silicone. And latex by itself deteriorates pretty much the second that it starts drying. The silicone helps to stabilize it and it won't last much longer on your products. It says 20 years, but if I get 5 out of something, I mean usually by that point if I wear it all the time to cons, it's destroyed anyways, or I just want to make something newer and better. But in any event, I'm not going to go through, I, I will tell you straight up, I did this whole side at once. I put the silicone on my finger and just spread it out uh, in between everything at once. And then I used water in my finger and I smoothed it all out at once. But I'm not going to do all that on camera. It'd be a boring time lapse. You wouldn't really learn anything. So I'm going to show them this one area right here. You'll notice on this ridge, once again, it's pretty dramatic. and doesn't match up with the lip. It's just sticking out. In fact, you can see the shadow right here. And you'll notice, too, looking at these two sides, the shadows are much deeper over here. Because without the silicone, the gully is much uh, deeper in between the two. And hopefully this will help give you an idea. It's just a blend it all in together. So it looks like wrinkled, ruffled skin. Symbiote skin versus, or as they say in the, the trailer, symbiote. Anyways, wrinkled symbiote skin, not just blobs of hot glue. Because that's a little silly. But for all of this, I'm going to show you what I do. And the type of... The actual brand name, I should say, not type, the brand name is DAP, D-A-P, and the particular product is called Alex Plus, and it will say on the tube, acrylic latex with silicone, and it does go inside of a caulking gun, so you're going to need a caulking gun if you don't have one to get it out, unless you have some other method. So you see I've got some on my finger, and what I'm going to do is just work and put it up under and there much of it as I can okay. 
Okay. I'll fill that in, even it out. The excess I can just kind of wipe up into this other spot here. Okay. And I also have a towel so I can get all this stuff off my finger, all the excess silicone. Hopefully my fiance isn't watching this. Because this is one of her dish rags. And it's gonna be ruined after this. I'm sorry, honey. It has been sacrificed to the cause. The cause of cosplay. Okay. Next I'll get my finger wet. Then I'll just go through. And smooth it out. And that is what I already essentially did over this whole entire side. I just did it really quick. Because I can. Because I've done this a lot over several years. I'm not saying that's a good idea for certain to start with. Okay. Starting to get there. Try to clear off the excess underneath. And all the excess water and silicone are just kind of spread out. Where I'm wiping that off. Okay. So I'm going to have to pick this up and use both hands. I'm going to have to put down the camera, unfortunately, just to finish smoothing out like that area there and there. But otherwise, that's, that's essentially the gist of it. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Uh, like I say, all this is finished and dried. I didn't see in any of this. I just got it smooth enough using my finger and some water that it came out good. And hopefully you won't have to sand. But if you want, you can always take a scrap piece of EVA foam, put some glue or something on it, and just practice before you do this. Because there is kind of a knack to it. If you've ever done pottery or clay or anything like that in school, or if you sculpt, this should be relatively easy, I think. Because that's what it reminds me of most. Okay, to pop in with some quick progress here and give you an idea of time. It's probably been about three hours since I first started this. Now, it will dry and set well enough within about a half hour to an hour, depending upon how thick it is. But if you touch it or bump it or drop it, you're gonna mess it up. So I'm pretty careful. You'll notice I started on this side and I'm working all the way over to this side. And anytime I do an area like this, I have to wait for it to dry. Because if I don't, any excess liquid can run if I set this sideways or try to start working on the other side with it upside down. So I always have to be very mindful of what I'm doing with this and that I'm patient and letting it dry. Okay, so I finished up, at least as of right now, I feel pretty confident with all my silicone work. I also filled in the seams. I didn't show this on camera, but my seams are actually pretty good. So I don't have a lot to film. Uh, basically what I do is I take this little tool that I have here. I pick this up at Lowe's, and I put a little bit of my acrylic latex with silicone. And I just kind of push it into the gaps and just scrape off the excess and then I rub around the seam not really so much directly on it but everything else around it I smooth that out as much as possible and that way I won't have a whole lot to sand which will make this go a lot quicker because there's still texturing on the tongue and just so much other little things still to do all right so I have just finished uh, using my tool here to do a second round of silicone in all of the seams just because the first one uh, when it dried it did shrink because of course this is water based so as it dries the water evaporates and it will thicken up a little more water on that one I don't think I got that one quite smooth enough anyways I had an attempted break in today, so I've been kind of running around doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But I did! After the police left and I'm back and finished work and all this other stuff happened, came home, cleaned up the house. Have actually had time to start working on this again, thankfully. And, of course, scenes. Uh, next thing we're going to do is I want an area kind of right in here that's going to look like a bunch of stretched skin. And I'm going to break out the glue gun to do that again, but it's going to be very fine, thin lines. And as an example, if you see how thin these are here, they're going to be really thin and close together like that. And this is what I'm going to use the liquid latex for, because we're going to use a little bit of toilet paper over it with the liquid latex 
to make it look a little bit okay, more like so stretching. I have put on my thin, very spindly hot glue lines. This is kind of a guide and an indicator. And next what we're going to be using here is I have some Monster Liquid Latex. You probably don't need this. I just like to use it because I bought it and it was kind of pricey. And But you could always use, I think, Mod Podge instead. Although I've never tried that, so you might want to experiment with it first. And I poured some of this into a tin that I have sitting here. It had mints or something in it. I don't know. But the point is it's disposable. And this old brush here is pretty beat up. We don't need anything perfect for this. And that as well is disposable. I don't know how to get the latex out of the bristles. And even if I did, I don't know if I'd bother going through the cleaning process. I'd just use some old beat up brush. But there's also toilet paper. I got the cheapest, thinnest. Uh, that works the best. Cheap dollar store variety. And I've already torn up little squares of it. And went ahead and just wrinkled them up with my fingers. And what we're going to be doing is taking our brush... Applying some latex to it. Maybe a bit much. And then start brushing some on here as a base so that the toilet paper has something to stick to. And you'll notice, of course, as well, I am, for reasons of safety, wearing a glove on my hand here that I'm using the latex with. You don't want this stuff on your skin. I mean, kind of goes without saying, but you don't. Same as, say, like, uh, contact cement or super glue or anything else. You want to avoid getting it on you. Set my brush down. I'm going to grab a small piece here. Go ahead and stick that on there. And now that I have my toilet paper piece stuck to it, brush my latex, just kind of pad. On the ends here, you can do down strokes because you want the toilet paper to go flush. And on the up end here, you can do some up strokes to get that to go flush. But unfortunately, the area right in the center here, you're going to have to pad. If you go too much one way or the other, you pull it up or you do this or that. I'm just going to continue this process and layer it on with the latex until I am happy with the effect that I have. And I just want it to look like stretched skin and the folded toilet paper will definitely help do that. All right, and just to pop back in here and show you what it is looking like while it is still wet. Of course, as the latex uh, does set and harden and dry up, it will, of course, uh, shrink up a little bit as it loses moisture. But we'll bring out a little bit uh, more definition on uh, from the toilet paper itself. Now, one thing that artistically I did here, I guess I can point out, you'll notice... Right there. You see that little bit of shadow and that little bit of space? That's meant to represent sort of a stretched gill section of the te of the side of the jaw, above where the lips and everything meet because of the extreme articulation of Venom's open mouth, teeth, tongue, and all that. So I thought that was subtle touch, but cool. And you'll also notice up here in the very corner where the line of the mouth would end, there is kind of a peak where it matches up with the hot glue pretty well. Right there. And that is also intentional. But aside from that, it's kind of just like wherever the toilet paper fell and lay is what we have. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next side, and then I'll come back and show you what both sides look like whenever it's dried. Okay, so now both sides here I have pleated. And you see, I still have about half of the little squares of toilet paper left. I'm surprised I have that much. Uh, not quite dry yet, but getting there and starting to get set. And as you notice, of course, both sides are not identical. They're not supposed to be. Because this is supposed to be the living, breathing uh, symbiote. Or symbiote, as they're calling it in the new trailer. So, yeah. And... Still have the paintbrush here, however, you will notice 
that the tip of the brush is now gunked with all kinds of dried latex and just barely the tip itself is kind of still usable but I'm not gonna pitch this latex next or I mean because I got one more thing I want to do which is this tongue here and what I want to do with the tongue is just start stippling it with the latex uh, especially more so up towards the center into the front and just to give it a couple of weird irregular bumps and things like that and to do that of course I'm just using the bottom end of the brush here and just lightly applying some here and there doesn't have to be once again in any sort of specific pattern just going into as I get down you'll notice they are getting smaller and smaller that is intentional because if you look closely at the trailer you will notice that the top of Venom's tongue kind of almost has these little spiky protrusions. They're small, but they, they move down into just some lumps that gradually just like disappear. So that's kind of the whole point of this is to get some of that effect while I still have the latex out. Because once I have this latex out and it's been exposed to air for X amount of time, it's not really great to pour it back in the bottle. So once it sits out like this and I use it, whatever the excess here is that's left over, I have to throw that in the trash. And I don't want to waste any more than I have to. But yeah, I'm going to go through and do this and then the spiky little protrusions I'm going to do with my finger and some silicone when I come back. Okay, so if you didn't know, latex dry uh, dries relatively clear. As you can see all the bunches of toilet paper there. And same thing on the tongue. It's kind of a yellowish clear color. Now the next thing I'm going to do, especially in this area right here, I'm most concerned with covering as quickly as possible. Like especially with this like webbed over stretched skin area uh, right in here. That comes over the corner of the mouth. In particular I want to make sure I cover but pretty much the whole thing. Because the thing about latex is the second that oxygen hits it and it fully sets up and like uh, dries as a rubber it starts to deteriorate so I'm gonna cover it with some more of the same silicone that I used uh, up top and not very much I'm just gonna get a little bit on my finger here not too much and I'm just gonna go ahead and spread that out some and work it around a little bit everywhere I had placed the actual latex. Okay, now that I've smeared some in there, I'm going to get my finger wet and go through and even and spread out all this silicone just to help cover and protect it because the silicone has a 20 year warranty and silicone is usually pretty good, but the latex itself will not last in the slightest. Uh, like I say, it's the second that it hits the air, it starts to deteriorate. So, first things first, get this silicone all smoothed out and worked around. And once I can do that, and that dries, we can go through and seal this with some Mod Podge. But until then, the silicone will do nicely until we can get back in here and mod podge this up. So if you look at still photos from the trailer you will notice that there is kind of a jagged stippling on the upper part of the tongue. Kind of a sawtooth pattern. I can't exactly replicate that but as you notice I've got it a little bit here. These little spiky pointy areas that I've dabbed all over the place and I just simply do this by taking my finger and dipping it into the silicone here. So I get a little dab on my finger, and then I just go in and bloop. Just kind of dab it on, and whenever I pull 
my finger away. I can get it on there. Whenever I pull my finger away, it pulls the silicone up with it and leaves, if this will focus. My lord, my shaky camera work and lack of focus. Okay. Yeah, and then you can, as you can see, it kind of has a spiky little jagged protrusion coming out of it. I thinned out, of course, as we go down with none towards the tip, because if you look at the tongue, it's mostly concentrated to where it's going into Venom's mouth, as if the tongue and the teeth kind of morph together, which is, in my opinion, really cool. And, man, that, that trailer, it just brings so many years and so many images from the comics to life in such a great way. Do you agree? If so, leave a comment. If not, leave a comment. I'd love to hear it. Alright, so next what I'm doing is I'm starting to seal the foam. And initially, I was going to do the whole entire thing with Mod Podge. In a sense, I still am. But I'm just not doing it all by hand because it's going to take forever. And this project already got slowed way down and I promised a viewer that I would make a shredder mask as a commission. So I need to get onto that. So what I came up with was I mixed some of this with some opaque black Createx airbrush colors paint and they're both pretty thick so it was almost half and half paint and Mod Podge but since they're so thick I had to thin the rest out with water and I added in a little bit of odorless mineral spirits to make sure it would all break up nice just about maybe five six drops of that and I do use distilled water as well to thin it out and shake thoroughly prior to use. Now I am going to turn on the air compressor here. So if you have headphones on, you've been warned. My voice is also going to get muffled because I am putting on a respirator. Since I don't want this stuff going into my lungs. And I'm turning on the air compressor now. <laughs> Okay, so as you probably saw in that time-lapse clips, I'm just basically, you know, let me take off this respirator. I'm basically just spraying it all over. Now, you'll notice here that I use Gloss Mod Podge. There actually is a reason for that. And the reason is, the foam has a tendency to absorb the Mod Podge. And if it absorbs that, and it's not shiny and, you know, sheen and smooth across it then whenever you paint it it's going to absorb that paint and there's going to possibly be little pock marks and other things in it so once i let one coat dry if i see an area that looks very matte and very dry then i know that that's the foam and that it has absorbed all that paint if it's semi-glossy and smooth to the touch then I know that, that I've put enough Mod Podge into the foam, that the foam has absorbed it, it's sealed it over, and when I paint it, it won't look like I've just painted foam. It'll look like I've painted a smooth sheen surface. So that is the reason why I use the gloss. It's an indicator when it dries, whether or not I have enough on the surface or not. Alright, now that i got it all sealed up here, I'm going to go ahead and use some Rust-Oleum uh, Paint and Primer in one. And the reason why I didn't just Mod Podge it by hand, of course, is there's all those nooks and crannies I can't get into. Up close with a spray paint can, it would drip and run and get all messy. And I don't want a bunch of brush strokes on the tongue from the Mod Podge either. Which also brings us about the same concerns with Plastidip. Trying to Plastidip those teeth, getting it even without getting it to run and drip and everything. I mean, maybe you can do it, but I can't, so I didn't. And I got my respirator and eye protection on, and I'm going to use this. I picked this up at Lowe's. I'm pretty sure you can get it just about anywhere that sells Rust-Oleum paint.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around the so back, and that's pretty much it. Wait 48 hours for the spray paint to cure. It is dry to the touch. It's been 24, but uh, there's other things I can be working on. So I'm gonna move on and start doing the lenses. And for the outside, just the outside part of the lens, there's gonna be an outside and an inside because if you watch the trailer and look at the images, you can see that there's a definite clear, glassy, glossy lid over the white underneath it. So what I need to have, obviously, is a clear outside. And I also need something that can curve and match up with the shape of this. So what I have here is some eighth inch thick clear acrylic plexiglass. It's important that it's acrylic. I don't know much about the regular plexiglass, but I know that the acrylic, you can heat with a heat gun and you can shake it, uh, shape it. It's also much less brittle. It's also very hard to cut. It came with a cutting tool that either I'm not using right, or I bought the wrong type of cutting tool, or I don't know what, but it's useless on this. It cuts nothing. So, I'm going to end up using my Dremel with my cutting wheel here to cut it. I'm going to cut this off camera. Part of the reason why, it's not really easy to just film this and time lapse it like the sanding. And, I mean, I don't really need the time lapse. It's just kind of entertainment value. But... I mean, you can see just how clear this is. Like, this stuff is wonderful. It's almost as clear as glass, and it's very lightweight. And since it's acrylic, you can also tint it with dyes as well, though we're not going to need to do that here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like when I'm done with it. So I have one piece cut out here, and you'll notice those little white splotches. If I can get it to actually focus on the lens itself be hard because it's clear. Well, you can kind of see it. But those are just little grains and particles and there'll be all kinds of little stringy things that come off whenever you're trying to cut this. And that is why I of course wear safety goggles and a respirator. I don't know what this stuff is and I don't want to breathe it in and I sure don't want it in my eyes. And you're also going to get a lot of pieces up on the edge here that like this here. You see that little bit of, if I can get it to focus, come on. Okay, so right here on the edge, sorry that took so long, right here on the edge, see that little white flashing sticking off? Make sure you wear gloves when you clean that off. When it comes off of here, it's hot, which is the second reason that I'm wearing this and this. Not just to breathe it in, but if this stuff hits me, it's not going to burn a lot, but man, if that gets in your eye, it's going to do some serious damage and you really need to be careful. Uh... So yeah, that's the roughed up piece. The edges are a little sharp, so just for my own safety, I am going to sand them down, once again using my Dremel. Before we move on to the heating phase, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the second one, then I'll come back and show you how I heat and shape it. Okay, so I know I said I was going to come back and do the heating, but I just want to show you real quick. I just cut this, and there's just a couple little things holding it on. You can hear that creak as I go to do it. Whenever I do this, I have my Dremel set at around 20. But I'll crank it up to 25 too if need be. It's better to have it going a little faster. And I just do a little bit and take it off. A little bit, take it off. A little bit, take it off. And first put my line in. And then I go through and cut all the way through going down it gradually. Give my Dremel a little bit of time in between to cool down. And not have to work so hard. It's already pretty hot now. And I don't want to burn this out because they're not cheap. And I use this all the time for everything from Nerf guns to cosplay. So... Yeah, really want to keep that around. And also wanted to show you as well, pop this out of here, all this plastic stuff that gets stuck to it. Whenever it's warm, it's pretty soft. And you can see some of it here is almost cloth-like, just thin little fibers. It's the stuff you don't want to breathe in, it's why you wear the respirator and the goggles. And once they're... Uh, dry the harder parts of it can be pretty sharp and can prick you just like a splinter or a thorn You don't want any of the stuff in your skin. I probably shouldn't even be handling it directly, but I am So I'm going to throw on some gloves clean this flashing off and we'll come back and shape them to match up with the cowl So after I cut out my lenses just so I got my work area clear and everything I stuck them in a bag That's just to help them to not get any more dirt or grit on them or debris or scratched up Whenever this acrylic comes in, it does have a plastic coating on both sides, about as thick as a plastic bag. So I figured once I cut them, I better keep take care of them until I can finish heating them. So I went and grabbed just a Walmart bag to mask my area. Because underneath it, there's all kinds of grit and other crap you can see right here. And I'm going to use some Windex and a regular old towel to clean them off before heating. 
You want to make sure they're as cleaned as possible and wear gloves too so you're not getting oil and smudges on this because you have to get this pretty hot in order to shape and curve it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat half, shape it, let that cool, turn it around, heat the other half, shape it, if that makes sense. Because A, I don't want to burn myself and B, I don't want to get oils and things like that or any grit into it when it's hot. Because it can actually go into the plastic whenever it's that hot. Okay, so I have my lenses all cleaned off and I have this Drill Master heat gun here. It is dual setting. I'm going to run it on the high setting, which is the bottom position, so that I can get this stuff nice and hot so that I can actually start to shape it. And much as I already stated, I am just going to heat one half of this, okay? Not the whole thing, just one half. And you'll notice here that I am pointing the heat gun away from my hand. I am pointing it into this direction here. Okay, so you'll notice that I have heated this considerably more than a piece of foam. I don't even know if that much is going to be hot enough. Oh yeah, it's a little bit flexible. Okay, and just from that I got the slightest bit of curvature. <laughs> so it's going to have to get a lot hotter. Okay, I think this will be better. Oh yeah, that is much more pliable. Okay, however, I am going to point out here that this is quite hot. So I am very gingerly touching it because I do not want to burn myself or melt these gloves to me or anything else. Point is, you should probably wear work gloves, but I do not want uh, to get any fingerprints smudges or anything in this okay so there you can see I've got some curvature yeah probably definitely going to need more but that is not a bad start and yeah I'm just going to continue this process of heating and shaping the acrylic until I get it to the curve and the shape that I want to fit behind the eye okay now that my acrylic lenses are heated and curved. I stuck them in new plastic bags because the other one did have a little bit of grit and stuff in it. And I haven't put this one in the bag yet so you guys can see it. That's about the, the curvature. The exact curvature depends on the size of your mask and how well you've made it or what you've done, if you've altered it or anything else. So I just matched this up to the inside and just occasionally checked it and eh, need a little more or eh, need a little less, went a little bit too far. And I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera you can see that heating it does warp the acrylic a little bit. If you focus there, say on like Ray's face, as I'm moving it back and forth now, you can kind of see that it's a little, little warped. But it's still totally clear, like glass. It's not perfect and flat and even, but you get way better visibility than you do at a lot of other things. And you can hand shape it yourself. So I'm super happy that I got turned on to this stuff. I first saw it in a video by Aw Me, and it was on a Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire video. So props to them. This was not my invention. I saw it on their video a couple years ago or a year ago or however long, and it just kind of stuck in the back of my head. And for the Star-Lord Walkman and this and my own Nerf masks for Family Nerf Wars, this stuff has come in high usage. Right, so on to the airbrushing. So as you'll notice, the teeth and the tongue and everything in the mouth are gray. You're also going to notice I put the gray on more thickly here and blended it up almost to black there. 
And same thing with the teeth. The outer teeth have a high layer of gray, the inner ones not so much. That's to help create a depth effect. Of course, I'm not going to leave this gray. Gray is just the base color for everything. Next, I'm going to go through and start layering on some other colors. And if you're curious as to what type of gray exactly that I used, I used some transparent Createx gray. All right, so before I start layering on any colors or the teeth or doing the gums or anything like that, I went ahead and masked off the tongue by just wrapping a scrap piece of a, actually a Toys R Us bag. Sadly, they're going out of business, or maybe you hate them and you're not sad, I don't know. I liked it because I could go and they had all kinds of Nerf accessories and things, although this one's kind of common, but it was half off, so bam. But anyways, they have all kinds of accessories and things like that that I could only find online and couldn't find at Target or anywhere like that, so... I'm sad they're going, but that just leaves a void for someone else to fill, perhaps. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to mask this off because I don't want to get the whites and the yellows and the different colors all over the tongue and then have to try to go back through and repaint it. That's just not going to be any fun. And I'm going to start doing the teeth first. Uh, and too, also, you'll notice some scuff marks here. I went through and sanded some of the rough areas where there were some bubbles and stuff in the primer because, of course, I am going to paint all this black as well. And maybe you're thinking, oh, why are you painting it black? If, no, I'm going to paint it all black and then clear coat the whole entire thing. Bam, beginning to end. That's why it's a primer. It's a base coat. So, yeah, first teeth. Okay, moving on to the next phase, I have my airbrush here that I'm going to turn on. It's going to be loud if you're wearing headphones. Keep that in mind. Or if you have your speakers cranked, I don't want to, like, bust your speakers or your ears. Uh, you can see a little bit here. I started to add a little bit of white here and there. And what I'm going to do is go back and forth layering white and yellow and I'll pop in occasionally and show you guys I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the airbrush and this white that I have currently in my airbrush has been thinned out so much that it is like water so I'm not applying very much at the time that's not even in camera sorry turning off the airbrush as I was saying before I am gonna leave the back teeth darker to give depth so yeah they're gonna be white but they're just basically gonna catch whatever is overspraying from the front teeth all right so I went through and very similarly to the white I oversprayed some yellow I don't know how well this is gonna go up, turn up on camera but I thinned out some brown and just splotched it here and there. And you can see a spot right there. Just kind of put little spots over the teeth. And now, I've got my airbrush turned on here. Apparently it's kicking on without me even using it. And I have some more white. And I'm going to take this, put my cap on it. And I'm going to go over this again with some white. So we have some nice layered colors. Hopefully this will end up matching up somewhat closely with the dingy gritty color of the teeth okay see if I need to add any more white or not but I think that's probably gonna be okay okay so here is how the teeth are looking now that they're dried they're white but as you see as the light and the angle changes you can see those different colors showing through gives it some nice uh, depth and dimension however I'm not super happy with the texture of the teeth so what I'm probably gonna do is take some gloss Mod Podge 
and brush it over them so I can have some nice vertical texture in it. Not super heavy, not real thick, a fine brush, but I would like some different texture than what it has now. It just looks kind of blah. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done the gums, and what I used for that was some Createx Transparent Red. And I thinned this stuff out a lot, once again, to the texture uh, consistency of water. And hopefully this will show up good in the light. They kind of have that reddish pinkish hue, since I had got white all over them, and the yellow and everything else from doing the teeth. It just made sense to not mix a pink or go buy a pink, but just take the translucent red and put it over it. And I put it a little thicker in some areas and a little thinner in others, right? Once again, to give it that depth and perception. And if I want to go back through and highlight it and low light it a little bit more, I can always add a little red, some spots here, and a little mist of black in between or something. Oops, sorry about that. But yes, the airbrush is still on. I did not film this because I have to have my head so close in here. If I set the camera down, I'm going to be in the way. And like I say, I'm so close up into it to make sure I don't spill the paint over onto this or spray it over onto the teeth that I just can't, I'm sorry, I just can't film it. But I am going to turn the airbrush back on here because I have this piece of scrap paper here and I'm going to show you just how low I have the airbrush. The airbrush is at about, uh, about 25 PSI. The working pressure, since my air compressor isn't great, is actually around 10 to 15, somewhere in between there. And I just barely push down and pull back on it just to get the lightest stream possible. And this is what I end up with. You see a very thin spray. And if you're careful and you get up close, you can see here, you can just gradually color in any area. That's essentially what I did on the gums. Just went in and colored them in very carefully. Like I say, lighter in some places, darker in others. Really want this to stand out. So pretty happy with this. Now that that's done, I'm going to move on and I'm going to Mod Podge all these teeth to give them that texture that I wanted. So now I've maxed off the teeth. Don't really need to mask off the whole mask, of course, because this isn't spray paint. It's just an airbrush and doesn't really do you know, the type of overspray and splatter and mist that spray paint does. But I do need to cover the teeth. I don't want all these other stuff getting on them. And you'll notice I pointed this out before, but like I said, gray. Heavier gray here fading up into almost black. And what I've done is I've loaded up a little more white. I'm going to give it a light mist here. I'm going to turn on the airbrush. This will be loud. Hopefully the airbrush will work and I won't have to stop and put a bunch of paint thinner in again because I've been having problems with it. I've not been happy. Okay, turning this on. Blade reaction. There it goes. Okay, move back to spray. Okay, I was really relatively quick and painless. I don't think I'm gonna actually even need to time lapse that. But same concept as with the gray, more white here, up into a little darker up here. And same as I did with the gums, I'm going to take some transparent red and go ahead and overspray it, and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. All right, now that said tongue is done, I did pretty much the same thing with the tongue as what uh, with with the red as I did with the with the white. More white down here, less up here. More red down here, which of course gives it a nice dark pink, fading up into here. But a bing, but a boom, done. Now what I have here next is a scrap piece. Sorry about finger in the frame. A scrap piece of EVA foam. I'm not going to mask any of this stuff off to paint all the rest of it black before I go ahead and do my acrylic sealer because what I'm going to do is just hold this in place to help mask it off as I just go ahead and do my my various spraying and touch-ups and just basically painting the whole thing black essentially as well. Yeah, I don't really need a, a whole mask job for that. That's the nice thing about the airbrush. If you just block off the area that you don't want paint on, then you just don't get it there and you don't have to mask the whole thing. Pretty convenient. All right, now that it has been painted black, I've allowed it to dry, and then I went back through and clear coated it. And for the clear coat here, I used the same stuff I always use, which is 
Treehouse Studios clear acrylic gloss coating. Uh, clothing. Coating. Dries in minutes, creates a permanent water resistant finish. It's not waterproof, but the fact that it's water resistant is really awesome. Although it is a little pricey, but still, I think totally worth it. Also, no rattle ball, so it's not loud whenever you shake it. And I feel like it comes out a lot better and dries and looks a lot better than, say, anything from Lowe's or Home Depot as far as your normal clear coat lacquers and other things like that. I really do feel that this does definitely work the best. It will get cracks and creases in it, but I don't feel like it cracks and splinters the same way that other clear coats do. And this is, of course, something to pick up at Hobby Lobby. If you don't have one of those, I mean... I don't know where you're going to find it, because I don't know where else they sell it. I've never seen it anywhere but there. But maybe Joanne Fabrics, Pack of Tans. Or if you can't find it, just use whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, I suppose it doesn't matter. The differences okay. are small. Onto the lenses. You notice that I've already cut out and heated and shaped the acrylic. That's great. But now we need the screen behind it. If you have a heavy-duty enough sheer fabric, you can probably just use one layer. But... I ended up using two of this, and this is just some, like, random craft fabric. In fact, this is in the floral section at Hobby Lobby. It's like Robert Stanley collection or something. I don't know. But it's kind of ugly and bright and gaudy. So what I usually end up doing, whether it's the Red Hood mask that I've done in the video, or Batman, or anything that I put lenses in, I always end up painting it white. And I paint it white because I just don't like this glittery color. Especially for Venom, we want a white base. So using something like, say... A paintbrush or spray paint to paint sheer fabric is not really good. You kind of have to use an airbrush or just get some nice white sheer fabric. I just happen to have this laying around because we're using it to wrap presents and I'm broke, as always in pretty much every video, so I'm just scrounging whatever I have. And of course, this stuff isn't quite thick enough, so you'll notice a section here it looks a little more globby and opaque. That's because I glued two layers together with super glue. Let them sit overnight. But to airbrush them, the airbrush, obviously the air from is going to blow them all over the place because these weigh absolutely nothing. So I did tack them down in areas that won't be affecting the mask. And essentially this one is for what we'll call the right eye, which is over here, technically left if you're wearing it. And this one, of course, is for the other side. So first thing I've done is I put some white paint, the same white paint that I used in uh, the last couple clips as I'm doing the teeth and everything. Thinned out, super thin, water consistency essentially. And I got it in my airbrush. I'm going to turn that on. If you're wearing headphones or have your volume cranked, you may want to turn it down. Okay. So I just lightly went over it. I don't want to saturate it with paint. I just want to take off that shine. And you'll maybe, I don't know if the light's good enough to see this. Mm, not really. But <laughs> when you're looking at it, it has that ugly, gaudy shine. But then here where I put the white paint, it's obviously been dulled down. I don't think you can quite see it on camera. Because the paint is wet, which is making it look shiny in there. But it's not really. Or it won't be. Once it dries, I'm going to go ahead and spray the other eye, then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to do the effects on it. You know that my white has had some time to dry here. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my little airbrush again. I put some black, Createx opaque black in it with a fair amount of water and a little bit of Windex to thin it down. Pretty much like the white to the consistency of uh, water. So it's super thin and almost opaque essentially. And let me turn on my airbrush here, warning if you're wearing headphones or have high volume, this will get loud. And you can see that is not a very dark or definitive black line there. And that's basically no more dark than that is what I'm going to go for on this. And whenever I was looking at... <sighs> The photos and screenshots, etc., from the trailer, I noticed the eyes had a faint swirl shape. Also, if you look at one of the promo posters that has half Tom Hardy's face and half Sym Symbiote taking over, uh, you can also notice it that this pattern as well in the eyes. And when I first saw it, what it made me think of was just kind of swirls. But the more I looked at it and the better resolution of photos, what it reminded me of was kind of the patterns of veins or tree branches. So that's what I'm going to go for here. Airbrush, going back on. 
Okay, so that's a good start. I'm going to go in and fill in and redo and clean up a couple of these lines, but I think the tip of my airbrush is getting dried out and the paint's not coming out very smoothly. And that's also because I have a pretty cheapo airbrush. It works, but I've been running it hard for a year and a half, and man, it is past time to purchase a new one. Uh, I'm thinking about an Iwata, but they are quite pricey, and I just don't have the money yet. Okay, and we're back. And I have, of course, filled in and evened out the lines, the veiny areas, added some of this blue. Of course, over here is an overspray. It's actually not going to be part of it. All the actual usable part is in here. Anyways, but I would like to blend it all back together, so I am going to be turning on the airbrush again. And much like I did with the teeth, I'm going to go over it with a light mist of white. It's already helped blend it back in somewhat, but I think I'm going to add a little more. But either way, hopefully you get the idea. And I don't know if I've mentioned this yet or not. If I did, I'm sorry for mentioning it again. But if you don't have an airbrush, you can always find other techniques by using craft paints, dry brushing. I did that for several years before even getting an airbrush. I would say about three, four years worth of making cosplay stuff before I even started my channel. I did everything by hand with a paintbrush. So don't think that just because you don't have an airbrush, you can't do this. Uh, get some sheer white fabric. You can dry brush your veins and stuff on and do the same. Same thing with the teeth or the tongue. Is it going to look the same as your airbrush at the end of the day? No. But if you're careful and you're diligent and you're patient, you can get a really close to and very good effect that way as well. Okay, so the next thing to do is to draw out the lines to cut these out so I can glue them. To the back side of my lenses, of course, I cut my lenses bigger, so I have space to add a small little line of contact cement around it and around the eyepiece. But first, I have to cut the eyepiece out with some scissors. And to make this easy to trace, since all this is curved and everything, I actually just used uh, the tail of my skateboard. Because that actually fit the curvature, ironically enough, of this. But any sort of curved surface you have, you can sit on will assist you in tracing it out. Now I'm going to trace these out and put a little okay, bit of contact so cement. I use contact cement just along the very edge, like I said, to attach the stuff that I painted, the fabric that I painted, to the plexiglass. And I just barely put it on the edge because I don't want any of that yellow to get down in here and look all gross. And if we move over to this side over here, you can see that... I have already put in the one lens, okay? And I did use contact cement, if this will focus. I did use contact cement, and I also want to show you the inside of it. After I contact cemented it in, I used a hot glue gun to seal around it, just to make sure that it stays in. And also, just in case there's any little jagged burrs or edges that I happen to miss sanding it, I don't think there is, but the simple fact is, if there is, I don't want it poking me in the face whenever I put this on. So I went ahead and sealed that over. And to figure out just exactly where to apply the contact cement, I set the lens inside the mask and I drew around the shape of the eye. And of course you're going to be applying the contact cement to the outside, but whenever you hold it up to a light source you can completely see that inside line on the outside. And you know exactly where to put your contact cement and then bada bing bada boom you just glue it in from the inside and seal it with hot glue. Okay, and now both 
eye lenses are in. It's been sealed. Everything seems good to go. So I am very excited to go and try this on. Okay, so a few other things. You'll notice that I didn't close off the area between the tongue and all the teeth here. And I mean, in fact, I can just stick my fingers out of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's totally open. You can cover that off with some black mesh or tool or any fabric like that. Or you could get uh, one of those morph masks that just cover your face on that translucent black fabric maybe cut out some eye holes or something for breathability or just leave it open it allows air to pass through this and believe me between like all the silicone and all of the latex and paint and the solid lenses for the eyes you're probably going to want to breathe so if anything i would say mesh for cosmetic purposes I feel, or display purposes solely, you could, you know, make a piece that extends from the tongue here and goes back behind the teeth and covers the whole thing. And you could go through, much like I did on the tip of the tongue here, right where it comes out of the mouth, and did all those little uh, spiky protrusions with the uh, dap that you could do that in there too and blend it all in and, you know, texture it and airbrush it for depth effect and all that stuff. I left mine open for comfort, okay? And also, the patterns for this are made to fit my head. My head is 23 inches. Now, that 23 inch measurement comes from measuring this way around my head, okay? Now, when I put the mask on, it is loose, and truthfully, it would probably fit a 24 inch head. However, the thing is, the bottom of this here, the opening, curves in so much that it's difficult for me to get it on my head. I really have to be careful and push my ears in and really slide this on carefully to not wrinkle or damage any of the foam all through this area. A thing you could do to easily remedy that is just widen the back seam here where the two center pieces meet. And that would probably give you enough head space. Or, whenever you heat it and shape it, just don't shape it so rounded in like I did. Shape it so it flares out so you can actually get it on your head. So yes, I think this would fit 24, but keep in mind, 24 inches is going to be really tight. It's going to be like a second skin. If you have like large nose or thick brow or, I don't know, protruding cheekbones, I'm just coming up with stuff here. Uh, excessive Bruce Campbell chin, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it may be way too tight for you. So you're going to need to scale up the patterns, okay? 23 inches, 23 and a half or smaller is what these patterns are made for. Uh, most people understand computers better than me and were explaining to me how to scale patterns on a computer and I don't get it. Everything I do is done manually by hand. So I'm certain those of you watching are probably way more computer savvy than me. But yes, I am going to put uh, pattern photos up on the Facebook, as always. And if you would like to purchase some digital JPEG patterns, you can get those from my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description. And like I said, I'm also going to try to put links to the Amazon listing where I got this clear uh, acrylic plexiglass that I use for the eye lenses. And anything else I forget or any questions you have, leave them in the content, uh, comments below or go ahead and private message me on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys like the mask. And as always, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. All your support really helps. And as always, I really appreciate it, and you guys are all awesome.